Imagine sitting on a plane and flying from New York to Paris in just two hours at hypersonic speeds. Or you just order a product from the other side of the planet with same-day delivery. At velocities more than five times the speed of sound, we could reach the other side of the world in just three to four hours. Intercontinental hypersonic flights would shrink our hyperconnected globe with the distances to travel, and several companies around the world are working to make this dream a reality. Big companies as well as genius startups are developing the hyperplanes of the future, and millions of dollars are flowing into these projects to finally enable hypersonic flight. And one of these projects is a really special one. A Russian Elon Musk is the CEO and bets on cheap green hydrogen to make hypersonic flights sustainable and economical. So what are those next-gen hypersonic airliners all about? How do they work? When can we expect hypersonic flights and can they really be affordable? This is the Chimera engine, named after a fire-breathing hybrid creature of ancient Greek mythology. Just like the mythical beast, the engine is also a hybrid of a turbojet and a ramjet. By making its first successful mode transition, the engine passes a significant milestone to make operational hypersonic flights a reality. It is developed by Hermius, an Atlanta-based startup that was awarded $60 million by the U.S. Air Force to build an aircraft faster than the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, the fastest air-breathing crewed aircraft in human history. However, the aircraft retired in 1998 as more advanced and cost-effective reconnaissance technologies, such as satellites and unmanned drones, took over. But the hypersonic race is still ongoing and pushed heavily by the military to achieve strategic air superiority and military dominance. Therefore, Hermius is developing three hypersonic aircrafts. The first one is the Quarter Horse, an unmanned short-distance aircraft that will fly in 2024 for the first time to validate the Chimera engine in flight and touch Mach 4 plus speeds, breaking the nearly 50-year-old airspeed record held by the legendary SR-71 which flew Mach 3.3 about 2,193 miles per hour. The Dark Horse is the second one in development by Hermius. The uncrewed aerial system will take off in 2025 for the first time and represents a major technological leap. The aircraft is designed for multi-mission purposes and to be fully reusable. It will be capable of sustained hypersonic flight five times the speed of sound around 3,850 miles per hour, a technology no other country in the world is capable of. With all its experiences made with military aircrafts, Hermius plans to build a hypersonic passenger plane as well. The Halcyon, a 20-seater traveling five times faster than any commercial aircraft available today. That means New York to Paris in just 90 minutes. The Halcyon could operate for 125 transoceanic routes, with the potential to add more than $4 trillion to the global GDP growth per year by radically accelerating the speed of commerce and cultural exchange. The Halcyon is supposed to be in the skies and operational by 2029, but it is not the only project to enable hypersonic flights. Another startup is working on the same goal but they have an entirely different approach, promising to make hypersonic flights affordable and more sustainable, powered by hydrogen. This is Mikhail Kokorich, called the Russian Elon Musk. He is the founder and CEO of Destinus, a European startup with headquarters in Switzerland and a multidisciplinary international team of seasoned aerospace experts from all across Europe. They have designed a near-space vehicle or hyperplane, a mix of an airplane and a rocket. In order to fly faster, you need to fly higher. Cutting the flight time to more than half the usual duration may seem unheard of. However, Destinus is putting its foot down in turning this once improbable idea into a myth. 
To achieve hypersonic velocities, Mach 5 and beyond, Destinus will fly higher than conventional airplanes, above 30 miles from sea level, reaching up to the mesosphere. The vehicle will go through six stages. It will take off at subsonic speed in the first stage to avoid loud, disturbing rocket-like noises. Takeoff is the usual horizontal form, but with a difference that Destinus hypersonic airplanes quickly accelerate. Once they reach the high-altitude climb phase, these ultra-fast planes ignite the chemical rocket engine to further boost the speed. At these high velocities, it's a challenge to keep the structure cold. Therefore, Destinus is developing a unique active cooling system solution that converts the thermal energy generated by friction with the air into propulsion. Keeping the structure cold enough to survive the external hot flow conditions while powering the rocket engines, says Destinus. Once closer to the destination, the hypersonic airplanes gently reduce the amount of thrust generated and enter progressively into a gliding phase, ready for landing. The hyperplanes will be entirely autonomous. Destinus is a uh, vehicle without a pilot. Uh, the vehicle will just fly through those points and go and land where it has to land. I mean, you know, automating the whole thing and making it fly by itself. And the near space vehicle will run entirely on hydrogen. Hydrogen is referred to as the fuel of the future. Hydrogen can be produced from water through electrolysis using renewable energy. When hydrogen is burned, the main byproducts are heat and water. And as the world is looking for alternative to fossil fuels, the cost to produce hydrogen will decrease with new innovations in time, which will help enable low-cost hypersonic flights. Beyond having zero carbon emissions, Hydrogen has a much higher energy content per unit mass compared to kerosene. This means that engines are more fuel efficient when using hydrogen. It also has a short ignition delay, which means that combustion systems can be made less complicated than some kerosene afterburners. Because it is not the first time in history that faster flights and shorter distances are being sought. The Franco-British Concorde was the first commercial supersonic airliner that serviced the transatlantic route between the US and Europe. It reduced the flight time from New York to Paris from seven to three hours, but traveling at supersonic speeds came at a price. After inflation, a ticket would cost about $12,000 today, so only royals and celebrities such as Queen Elizabeth, Michael Jackson, and Elton John could afford it, as well as wealthy business people. However, after almost three decades in service, the Concorde retired in 2003 because of rising maintenance costs, poor economics, and a declining interest after an accident that caused 133 fatalities. So how is it possible to fly hypersonic five times the speed of sound if flying supersonic two times the speed of sound with the Concorde was already problematic? When flying beyond Mach 5, the heat generated by air and gas in the atmosphere is extremely hot and can have serious impact on the aircraft, where temperatures can reach anywhere between 2,000 to 3,000 degrees Celsius. The Concorde's aluminum alloy structure couldn't withstand those extreme conditions, even though it only flew at supersonic speeds. But new discoveries in material science, together with new surface cooling systems, promised to finally enable hypersonic flights. NASA has already developed a new alloy capable of withstanding extreme conditions and temperatures using 3D printing and computer modeling. So the development remains interesting and hypersonic planes could take off in the near future. What do you think about these projects? We think that Destinus and Hermius are the most promising projects in the field of hypersonic flights. But big companies like Boeing are also researching the development of hypersonic planes. Subscribe to our channel and we will keep you updated on new innovations and breakthroughs in the ever faster developing world. In the meantime, watch how a new solar panel breakthrough can produce pure green hydrogen using only sunlight and air.